We're going to talk a little bit about photography. I'm going to look at a photograph of mine and talk, talk, talk all about it. Grab yourself a cup of coffee. What would you do if I sang out of tune? Or would you stand up and walk out on me? Lend me your ear and I'll sing you a song. And I will try not to sing out a key, yeah. Oh, baby, now I have a little help for my friends. What I need, yeah, I have a little help for my friends. What I want, have a little help for my friends. So today's photo is titled, um, With a Little Help. Um, as not as always, but as quite frequently, this photograph was taken with this lens here, this Nikkor Nikon 24 millimeter AIS. Uh, both of these people are now deceased. Um, as I oftentimes say, if my camera lens could speak, it would tell you things that you would not want to hear. And many a soul have passed through this, this piece of glass here. And it's really kind of special to me. So the photograph I have today, um, I tried to find, I thought I had some smaller prints of it, and I do somewhere, but I couldn't find them. But uh, <clears throat> the only one I could really get a hold of is this uh, large print here. Um, and hopefully you can see that and we can talk about uh, this. Uh, the two people in this image, the one in the foreground here is John Lee. John Lee um, actually became a friend of mine. He was a really decent a thoughtful, in-depth person. Um, he died a few years ago of a drug overdose. Uh, the other person here is Rico. Um, from what I understand, he also overdosed several years ago. Um, not so nice of a person, though. Uh, <laughs> and we can get into that. Um, this photo is uh, a Tri-X photo. It is shot on 35 millimeter film. It was shot with a, uh, a Nikon F2. Again, with the, uh, the Nikon Nikkor uh, 24 millimeter AIS lens. This is shot on lower Wacker Drive. Uh, you couldn't even do this kind of stuff down on lower Wacker Drive. Now they've totally remodeled the place. And um, um, but but anyway, quite challenging to photograph on lower Wacker Drive, especially with film. Um, the lighting is is uh, this is you could actually see the Tribune building from here. Uh, I shot quite a few photographs here due to the, work, to the positioning of the sun. And um, you can see the sun is really illuminating Rico and uh, placing John Lee in the shadows. If I get up close here, you can see a lot of detail in John Lee, his ear, his face, uh, the amount of focus in his eye as he is helping Rico to inject in his artery in his neck there's actually a whole sequence of photos that go with this right after uh john lee injected him rico actually went into convulsions um and was flopping around on the floor and um and right before this uh, this was uh let me see here uh how does that go oh my god what was that guy's name i can't remember i got a little a little poem about uh, this guy um selling bags underneath Trump Tower. 100 bucks buys a full jab. I'll see you there in an hour. Uh, there, there was a lot of these guys go to the West Side all the time to get their dope, and someone was keen enough to actually start coming downtown with some. Um, I can't remember what the hell. I'd have to go look up the poem. But anyway, he had just sold these bags, uh, and I have photographs of that as well. So it's, it's actually a series of photos that I'll put together at some point. But this one, one image here is titled With a Little Help. And um, I'm, I'm proud of this photo. I think it's a, uh, you know, to tell you the truth, man, this pretty damn good photograph. Um, to me, it's, it's up there with uh, uh, some of my idols, Eugene Smith and uh, Don McCullen. I, I, I place it in that category. A photograph. Um, again, this isn't something that a street photographer could take, just kind of walking by and, and take a crack shot. Um, I'm literally inches away. 
uh, from the back of John Lee's head. He could probably feel my breath on the back of his neck. That is how close I am here. And uh, you don't get that close in street photography. <laughs> this is, this is uh, documentary photography where you have an emotional investment with the people and both of these, both of these individuals know me very well. And that, yeah, again, you could not get a photograph like this. Access is key to this photograph. If you don't have access, you cannot get a photograph like this. This is a, uh, I don't know, what, it's a pretty large print. But, uh, and, you know, there's something about, if you can see John Lee's fingers, I hope, I hope this is catching it. I try to find a smaller photograph. Um, where is it here? His fingers, you, you can catch how soft and gentle John Lee's other hand, right? He's got his hand on his neck and then he's jabbing him with that, with that needle. And it's just so, so soft, almost, almost mother-like. Yeah. I miss John Lee. John Lee went to rehab, like a lot of addicts got out of rehab and, uh, more, more. I don't. I don't know the full story. More than likely, John was in some abandoned building uh, alone. He was kind of a loner kind of guy, and uh, he liked to shoot up in abandoned buildings. And sometimes, uh, I I envision him keeled over in one of these dumpy buildings. I got another photo of John Lee that I'll show you. Um, again, I think uh, up up there with. Uh, <laughs> with anybody else as far as the photograph goes. Um, but yeah, I, I miss John Lee. Uh, he was a, he was a really decent individual and, uh, insightful. We, we spoke a lot about uh, the nature of reality, God, psychology, addiction. Um, I always used to say John should, um, John could have been a businessman. Um, I, I always used to tease him and tell him that he should open up a school of panhandling and signing, right? He would actually do, uh, I don't know what you would call it. Um, you know, he'd try out different signs in different areas and get all the analytics about, you know, about what worked, what didn't work. Um, very neat handwriting, very meticulous in his spelling of the sign. Um, you know, he had all the stats. Like he would say that uh, percentage wise, it's black women that uh, uh, more often than anybody stop to give uh, money. Um, and a lot of the gangbangers actually would stop and give money. But both of these individuals uh, are no longer with us. They gave way to their addiction. Let me set this down and we can talk a little bit and I'll show it, I will show it again. Again, the name of that photo is with a little help. I try to name, name my photographs, <clears throat> the ones I print anyway. Let me get my other glasses on here so I can see. Oh, let me clean the glasses so I can see. Sorry about that. My camping trip is off. Um, we got about six inches of snow here. That's okay. Spend time with my dogs. Oh, and just real quick about the uh, workshop in New Orleans this October. Um, some people actually express some interest in it. But uh, I'm looking at, at Saturday, October 29th and or Sunday, October 30th of this year. Um, contact me at chuckgiants67 at gmail.com if you're interested in a photography workshop in either one of those days. <clears throat> What's up, Ramblin'? Howard, how are you doing? Sing it, baby. I love singing, man. Good morning. It's phenomenal. Thank you. I am doing fairly well today, man. Thank you very much, Joe. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Yes, Ray, I am doing good. I am doing good. I'm enjoying this series of going over uh, some of my work and some of my, my, my photography and not just the photography, the, the story behind it, who these, who these people were, um, you know, they were, they were people, they walked on this earth, they lived and, uh, they died. And, uh, like I said, to catch, to capture an image like this, you have to really get to know people. You're not, you're not gonna. There's no investment in street photography. That's I'm, I'm not impressed with it. It's it's a lot of drive-by, a lot of rich people with Leicas taking pot shots at homeless people, as if homeless people are there for their entertainment. So I don't think very highly of street photography, to tell you the truth. 
to tell you the truth, the, uh, the workshop would be about candid photography, um, about improving your photography, digital film. It doesn't matter what it would be. Um, if you're interested in uh, a little bit about videography, we could uh, we could do that too. Any questions, any comments about this photograph, about the process, about, um, you know, how to get an in? Let's get some, uh, let's get some feedback here on that. <clears throat> I'm doing very well. Some people might get, get mad that I'm not humble. <laughs> Do you have sympathy for the homeless or addicts? Well, I guess that's a, that's a very good question. I actually write about that in uh, uh, the book I'm magazine I'm working at, where John Lee is the main character in it. So sympathy, we'd have to unpack that word, and you know, what do you mean by sympathy? Do I have sympathy? And my perspective on that changed over the years, actually. Um, I went into this um, with a different attitude and a different perspective than when I came out of it. Um, so what do you, that's, that's a very good question. Thank, thank you for asking that. Could you unpack that? What, what do you mean? What do you mean by sympathy for homeless or addicts? Is that, uh, do I, is Baco Tang, is that how you pronounce that? Very good question. I, uh, I'm not trying to be a jerker. I actually, what what do you mean? Do I have sympathy? If you could unpack that a little bit, I'd really like to know what what you mean by that. And I don't have any problems answering this that question at all. Um, in, in fact, a lot of my my alley boys and a lot of my son. I'm leaning towards them choosing for this lifestyle. Yes, absolutely. So I don't have the typical kind of left-wing, uh, uh, hyper-feminine, um, bleeding-heart liberal. So I'm wondering if you saw them as victims. Mm -mm. No. <laughs> Actually not. You know, one of my main messages especially in alley boys, um, a group of homeless men. I hung around with them for about four or five years. And um, one of my main messages is that these people are choosing, this is how they choose to live. This is a lifestyle choice uh, that, they had, that they have made um, by act of their own free will. You know, John Lee uh, talks about it. I believe in the interview I'm going to, it's not really an interview. It's just a monologue of him talking for about 35 minutes. Talk, I think, I think in there, he talks about getting out of rehab and how, you know, once you get out, there isn't any physical, you've gone through the physical withdrawal, right? You've done all that kind of stuff. And there's really no reason uh, to go back and do that again, unless you're making a conscious choice. I don't, I don't like the, the, as another message in my heroin thing is this, that it's a disease, I think is a terrible, terrible, terrible way to approach this. It's almost a green light for, for these guys to use. Um, Cause when you say they have a disease, that means that they're powerless, right? And you'll hear a lot of this, this uh, set sentiment um, about just being powerless. So I have to do this. It's a, it's a disease I have. Um, Plus, it's not a disease. <laughs> that's the other problem with that, that whole model of it. it. Makes a lot of money for the centers. That's for damn sure. Um, um, so they're they're now. That being said, it's not total black and white. I do think that certain people have a genetic predisposition for addiction. Um, some of the just for example, we look at the heroin addicts that came back from the Vietnam War. 70, I'm actually getting hot. I'm going to take some of this stuff off. 70% of them, once they got out of the army or whatever they were in, never went back to using again, even though they were, they were full-blown addicts while they were uh, in a combat situation. Um, another 30% went on to uh, li live a life of uh, uh, addiction that, that finally took their life. Um, 
and I I would say that um, people have a genetic predisposition. Doesn't mean they're they're totally powerless though, and it's not an act of uh, uh, free will at some point. So I do have sympathy to a certain point, and yet I do understand um, probably better than a lot of people that uh, these people are making a lifestyle choice. You know, um, I also draw a contrast between how the, the, the alcoholics, the alley boys, have a pretty good life <laughs> compared to the heroin addicts. But, um, so yeah, I do have some sympathy. Um, but uh, I, in the end, I, I understand that this is a choice that they are making. Do you believe drug addiction is a disease? No, it's not a disease. That is a terrible, terrible, uh, there's a great book it's on my shelf here that uh, drug addiction is not a disease. Um, and some of the faulty thinking in that entire model of where it came from. And it's really a bad idea. And like I said, it just gives these guys a green light to go ahead and, uh, and to use. Um, that being said, I do think there is a genetic component to it. That's why I say, you know, don't try it <laughs> is, is the best thing because um, the pull can be a lot stronger on somebody who, who has a genetic predisposition for addictions. Um, there's no doubt about that. But um, in the end, man, it's, it's, it's mostly a choice that people make. You spend a lot of time with the heroin addicts. Can you explain why they chose that lifestyle? Another, man, you are, thank you, sir, for showing up here today. <clears throat> really great, great questions. Um. So this may sound kind of odd. There's actually an attraction to drug addiction. Um, there is a simplicity that is just incredible. The only thing these guys worry about is their next hit and their next fix. Um, and there's something actually attractive <laughs> of not having to worry about any of this, this, these other bills and, and responsibilities. And if you could imagine and think of a life that, um, revolves around only one thing and that is, and that is staying high. Or a lot of times these guys, um, uh, they're just fighting off sickness more so than, than uh, getting high. Um, why, do, why do they choose that life? You know, there are cultural influences um, outside of the home, outside of the family um, that attribute to it. Uh, there's things inside a family that can attribute to it. And, um, you know, there's a relief and an escape in drugs. You know, that's why the bars are, are full uh, a great thing to own because people drink during good times to celebrate and they drink, uh, to help them, uh, ease, ease the pain of suffering. Um, you know, there's, to me, heroin is a love drug. It, 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 it activates a lot of the same chemicals as, as love. And, um, so, you know, they get into it slowly usually. And, uh, there's something exciting about the lifestyle. Uh, D, it talks about that, about going out west, and it's a real adrenaline rush. <clears throat> I don't believe most people are powerless in life. They have choices. Sure, absolutely, man. <clears throat> so I don't know. I don't, there's a lot of reasons why people choose this lifestyle. But mostly it seems to be an escape from any sort of res responsibility. Uh, seems to be the, the, uh, the number one attraction. Or a, the draw to a, a singular responsibility. Um, because they're very responsible when it comes to get, getting that next hit. Glad I made the right choice. Came from math. Oh, cool, Ray. Yeah, I mean, I've struggled with uh, not that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, I'm going on probably close to a year where I haven't smoked pot. Um, uh, and I've, I've quit pot in the past. Uh, this is probably uh, for sure this time. Um, at, at my age of 55, 56 years old, with the COPD diagnosis, I just, I had to make a decision. Um, do I want to breathe or do I want to smoke pot? <laughs> and after a year of not smoking pot, they can't even pick up COPD. Um, I, I feel great. It kind of like uh, Keith Richards, you know, with the, he, he had to make a decision. Did he want to shoot heroin or did he want to make music? And uh, he chose music, you know. Good afternoon. 
Everyone is doing good, Matthew. Glad you're here. We're talking about this image here. Again, I'm going to show it multiple times during the stream. It's titled With a Little Help. And this is John Lee and Rico on Lower Wacker Drive. And it is uh, John Lee helping um, Rico to inject in his artery in his neck. This is something that... Uh, I actually have multiple photos of people doing it. Not not as good as this, though. This is. So why is it outside of the people and stuff? Why is it a good photograph? Well, <clears throat> there's a lot of reasons why it's a good photograph. First of all, the contrast in lighting, um, the shadows of John Lee with the bright illumination of Rico, the lighting is is dead on. Um. Then again, it's the layering of an image, just like we talked about yesterday with the with the hobo band image on uh, uh, Royal Street there in New Orleans. We have John that is taking up the foreground, right? Rico is the midground, lower whacker, the bars and all of that stuff are the background. So it's a layered photograph. Um, those are compositional things. Those are lighting things. Then there are, uh, how would the Roland Barnes describe it? I can't remember the word. There are little things in here, like the look in John Lee's eye. And you probably can't see it in the video. You'd, ha you'd have to see the print. Um, there's, there's an expression in just that eyeball. There's an emotion. There's a, a thought. There's an idea, right? And it's kind of explicit. The gentleness in which this hand is touching the neck, like I have said before, almost motherly. That's the, the feeling that it invokes. I'm trying to think of how Roland Barnes put that. <clears throat> so it's got a couple of things. And then and then the look in Rico's eye as well. So there, there's a lot here emotionally, intellectually, in the gestures, in the postures, in the expressions of these two individuals. So when you take the compositional elements, you take the lighting elements, and then you add in the emotional um, stimuli, I guess if you wanted to say, of the posture and the gesture, uh, that's what makes this, a, in my opinion, a world-class photograph. As far as documentary photography goes, and people can get mad at me all you want, um, this is, this is, up there with Eugene Smith and Don McCollin. <laughs> and uh, if, I do, if I don't say so myself, um, and I don't mind saying that because it's true. But uh, again, it, it hurts me that John Lee uh, overdosed and passed away. Um, like I said, we were actually, I spent more time with him than any other addict. Um, and like I said, he was a very deep, thoughtful and caring person um, where Rico was not Rico. Now, and again, a lot of times drug addiction doesn't make you a piece of shit. You come, you come to addiction as a piece of shit. And uh, Rico was kind of a piece of shit. Uh, Rico ripped everybody off. No, just no moral compass whatsoever. Narcissist, uh, uh, weapons grade narcissism with, with a guy like Rico. Um, and not with John Lee. Totally, totally too. And here's some, uh, you know, here Rico is illuminated in light and John Lee is dark within shadows. But in reality, personality wise, it should be the other way around. Um, as far as their character and their, their moral compass. <clears throat> 38 years clean. Awesome, man. The depths of human depravity knows no bounds. No, that's for sure, man. It does tell quite a story. And like I say, I have a series of photographs. <clears throat> Heck of a picture. Thank you. You look a lot healthier compared to last year. Yeah, I'm doing much better, Lee. <clears throat> much better. I smoked pot briefly in my uh, early 20s. <clears throat> when was the picture taken? Where it was taken on Lower Wacker Drive, probably 2014, 2015, right uh, before I moved to uh, uh, New Mexico. 
in 2016. So it's prior to two, maybe it was 2013. I can't remember exactly. Um, but it's on Lower Wacker Drive. And again, that's all closed off now. You can't get back there. Um, they put restaurants and all kinds of things down there. Total different world, but um, Lower Wacker Drive is interesting. I, ha I have, uh, as a matter of fact, maybe we'll do the uh, uh, Conflicting Worlds image, <clears throat> which is also Lower Wacker and part of the River Walk. Hello, Simon. How are you? Good to see you. So, yeah, that is uh, with a little help. And uh, like I said, it's a single image, but there's a whole series of things that happened before that. Oh, let me see. I think one of these right here, no, is the shot I took right before they injected it in his neck. Hold on. I got it here. Excuse me one second. <laughs> like I said, uh, Tom Tom, that's it. Tom Tom, selling the the pot or selling the dope under uh, Trump Tower. Hundred bucks buys a full jab. I'll see you there in an hour. That's who it was. It was a guy named Tom Tom, who had ah here it is. Okay. And this is what's what's ultimately in telling the story. It's not just a single image. Which way does this go? It goes this way. So Tom Tom had just uh, sold them this. This is right. This is John Lee about to cook this in a bottle cap. Again, this is a film photograph, twenty eight millimeter, twenty four millimeter Nikon lens. You see how dirty and filthy John's hands are. But this is the photograph I shot just before that. This is they're going to mix it up, um, and Tom Tam, I told him it was really powerful, um, wasn't cut much, and uh, so they mix it up. He shoots it into his neck, and then uh, he actually goes into convulsions on the ground. Um, I have photos of that, him laying on the ground, and um, you know, a single a single photo is cool. There's no doubt about it, but when you can put multiple photos together with text, now you, now there's nothing left to the imagination. Now you know the reality of what happened. And so that's the image I shot just moments before I took this image in, in, in the sequence of how things went down. I'll buy it. No, it's not for sale, man. It'll, it'll be in a magazine that you can buy. I don't sell individual prints like that. I, I just don't. A book of my best, best photos. Yeah, um, there's things you can purchase right now. And again, I'm still working on the, the last of this trilogy. It's called Against Doctor's Orders. And it's a different heroin addict. This is Shaggy. And I have these magazines that I put together. And I'm putting one together on John Lee as well. Um, this is part one. This is part two. The name of the magazine is Gravis, which means serious. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of text in here. There's uh, a lot of photographs in here. I tell the whole story in here. Um, so you can purchase those. If you go to chuckjines.com, you will see links to my Blurb account. You can get hard copies at Blurb. And you can also uh, get PDF or however that Amazon thing works. Um, but I don't sell individual prints of that type of stuff. I'm actually working on magazines and books to tell the whole entire story. Another thing that I have is a little book called Commuter Rail. And these are just cool images that I shot out the window of the train uh, on my way to and to and from the downtown area from the south suburbs. But um, is Shaggy still alive? I don't know. Um, it's, I, I don't know. Oh, thank you, sir, for posting. There's the link right there, chuckjines.com. Um, that I couldn't tell you, man. I, I don't know. It's hard to say. I do know he's missing his leg. He couldn't stay in the hospital. <laughs> the, the, his, his desire to get high. Well, like I'm saying in this next magazine, talking about how a lot of times these addicts, uh, these are great things that happen <laughs> to have an injury like that to where you need your leg amputated is just a blessing. Um, well, you can panhandle a lot more money 
<laughs> and that's that's how they kind of uh that's how they kind of look at it. Harold or Howard, I always get it. I don't know why. I'm terrible with names in my old age, man. I believe it's Harold. Thank you, Harold, for showing that. ChuckGiants.com. But no, you can buy my magazines. I don't sell individual prints um, of stuff like that. This this is one of uh, 60 or 70 prints that I had for a gallery show uh, in Joliet, Illinois. Um, I got boxes of very large prints. And uh, that's where that is from. But no, I don't, I don't sell the individual prints. I don't know why anybody would want to buy that as an individual print to tell you the truth. I mean, it's kind of gruesome in a lot of way. Yeah. Thank you very much, man. Appreciate it. But, um, yeah, that's, uh, with a little help. Is this one of your wet prints? No, 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 no. Um, a gentleman in Champaign Urbana did all of this printing for the show for me. These are all on a, uh, dedicated, uh, black and white inkjet printer. They're really high quality. This is really good paper. And like I said, he had a, if I remember correctly, that printer he had was like $7,000 or something like that. So I had these, I didn't even do these prints. And these are not mail order prints. This was an individual that uh, I bought the paper. And he he did all the all the prints for me, for the show, and then I did all the matting and and framing and all that stuff myself. But uh, yeah, man, just uh, a very high quality photograph. And unfortunately, both of these individuals are no longer with us. Yeah, I don't know about Shaggy, man. I just don't know. I don't have a whole lot of wet prints. Um, again, I, I like the process of shooting film, scanning and digital printing. Um, that's, that's my preferred workflow. Uh, wet, wet printing, this takes too, too much time. Um, I'm already shooting film too much time in space. You know, you need a whole, you definitely need, you know, you can develop film in, in a dark bag. You don't need a dedicated room. You start getting into wet printing. You need all of that other whole set of equipment. You need a room. And, uh, I, I'm just not, uh, I'm just not really not interested in it. There's no reason. I mean, that, uh, that does quite fine. <laughs> I like shooting the film, but, uh, the, the, the digital printing is, is fine with me. Any more thoughts, comments? either about this photograph, the people, or documentary work in general. Very different than street photography. Again, I don't have a whole lot of respect for street photography. It's, it's a, uh, I don't know why it's so popular. Probably because it's so easy. <laughs> I guess is the attraction to it. But there, there's no investment It's it, at all in street photography. It's uh kind of a sham genre, if you ask me. So again, I am going to be offering um, photography workshop in New Orleans this year, um, either Saturday, October 29th, and or I might do two of them, depending on how many people, uh, Sunday, October 30th, um, in the French Quarter of New Orleans, digital, uh, film, it doesn't matter. Um, you can check out my reviews. I got a pretty good workshop. Um, pretty good reviews on it, but, uh, just, you know, uh, to help, to help people become better photographers. If you have any talent at all or inclination for it, um, I have a pretty unique, uh, teaching style and philosophy behind it that, uh, could possibly help you. If you are interested in attending a workshop this October in the French quarter of New Orleans, contact me at chuckjines67 at gmail.com. Um, I was surprised I already had about half a dozen people contact me. Um, so that would be uh, Saturday, October 29th and or Sunday, October 30th of this year. <clears throat> Let me see here. Is the photography one of the things you miss about Chicago? You know, I really don't, I don't miss Chicago. I miss New Orleans. 
to tell you the truth, could would you do the same thing today? Absolutely not. With the racial tensions, I, I got this done just as things were really heating up. No, there is no way. Um, no. You, there's no way a white guy could go into those neighborhoods now without getting without getting hurt. I mean, it was it was it was hairy when I was doing it. Um, like I said, this was right before all of the the racial tensions busted out. Um, and no, you there's no way. <laughs> there's just no way. Very lucky that I was in there on this on this time slot. But no, man, you could not do it. All of my photos are very interesting. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. No, there's just no way. I wouldn't even attempt it. You'll get killed. They'll kill you. They'll take your shit and leave you leave you in an alley. I mean, one of the things that, uh, it, and it doesn't seem like it makes much sense, but a lot of the things, they would actually intentionally um, put shit in, in there so it, so it kills, kills the heroin addicts. The only reason they let these white people all right, sorry about that. My phone is getting hot. I have to end this one here. Everybody have a great day and uh, keep on photographing.